Hey guys, it's me, Paul, and for this video, I'll be teaching you how to use my newest asset on the Asset Store, Activation Station. Now, Activation Station is a powerful script that lets you enable or disable objects on a large scale. I have set up a sample scene for you all today. Over here, you can see it's titled Test. Now it has a couple game objects already set up. If you click on Group Setup, you can see four instances of the Activation Station script. Each script corresponds to a particular function of Activation Station. This is for Group 1, this is for Group 2, this is for Group 3, and this is for Group 4. If we play it, if you click on the left mouse button and hold it, you can see that some some of the game objects are disabled and then release and then if you click on the right mouse button you can see that other game objects are disabled but the other ones are enabled too and you can play around with it for a little bit and it kind of shows you the power of activation station all right now let's stop the play mode and take a look at what's inside each of these instances of activation station over here in group 1 you see that the activation style is called the checklist. There's multiple activation styles. For each group there's a corresponding style. Group 1 is the checklist, group 2 is whichever works, group 3 is follow the leader, and group 4 is always rebel. I will cover mouse activation and keyboard activation later. Okay, so for the checklist you can see that there are a couple of slots for game objects, and you notice you can also you can't um, change the check mark and the reason for that is because um, if there's no game object it doesn't really have any basis to be in the conditions or even on the impact of met conditions area of the activation station script let's take a look at the naming convention first one sphere L what that means is it's in group one okay so it's here it's a sphere and it's in the left side Similar to one sphere B, meaning it's in the bottom side, and one sphere R, which means it's in the right side. So for the check marks, what they basically mean is that um, if it's in the conditions area, it checks to see whether the object itself is enabled or disabled. So if we uncheck it, that means the conditions will only be met if one sphere L is enabled and one sphere R is disabled. Let's enable it back again. So the conditions will only be met if this is enabled and this is also enabled. That's for the checklist. Now if it is enabled, it will go immediately to impact of met conditions, one sphere B, and it will actually enable it. So one sphere B will only exist if both objects are enabled. Now if they're not, if one of them is disabled or if they're both disabled, it's going to disable the, um, the object. See? See? Just one of them is disabled, it disables the object. So if you want to add like a new game object to the conditions section, you can also just drag it in and it'll you can check or uncheck it. So now the new conditions are this one is enabled, this one's enabled, and this one has to be disabled for this one to be enabled, otherwise it will be disabled. <laughs> hope I didn't go too fast there. So let's just clear this one. And if we minimize this, basically what happens is that um, if the conditions are met, it's going to enable itself. This object will enable itself. But then at any time in the future, oops, at any time in the future, if these objects are no longer, um, if these conditions are no longer met, it's still going to be enabled. Take a look. See, it's still enabled. But then if, for example, we disable one sphere B, go back to group setup, and then make it so that um, one of them has to be disabled, the other one has to be enabled. Let's see what happens. See? If you disable this side, it enables it. And then if you re-enable this particular sphere, 
it's still there. So that's what happens with impact of met conditions. Even if the conditions are no longer met, it's still going to keep that same, um, that same uh, state. Now let's also cover the, um, the interface. So if you don't want consequences of unmet conditions, so if you don't want it to disable it if the conditions are not met, you can just you can just minimize it, see? And it's not going to check for this particular section. If you maximize it, it's going to check it. So it's going to disable the it's going to disable the object if it's maximized. Another thing about the interface is like it gives you the option to clear all the objects. So sometimes like you might have like a bunch of objects and you want to like clear it out. You can also do that, see? So it clears all the objects automatically for you. Let's undo that. You can also disable all objects or enable all objects. It gives you a much better um, level of control over uh, checking whether an object is disabled or enabled or, or trying to make it so that all objects are enabled or disabled. Those types of situations. Oh, and one last thing. You notice that like the, the slots turn green. That ma that basically means that like if it's in the condition section, if it's green, that means the conditions are met. See, if it, if one of them is red, that means um the condition one of the conditions are not being met. The green slots means it's a condition that's being met, and a red slot means that it's a condition that's not being met. And then you also see like over here the section's green. The reason is because uh what that means is that like the conditions are being met, so it's gonna go to this area. If the conditions are not being met, it's gonna go to this area. That's what the green ones represent. In the in these sections, that's what it means. See? So it's kinda like a visualiz a visualization. So like if the conditions are met, it's gonna go here. Otherwise it's gonna go here. And then um, perform the perform the the new state. It's gonna apply the new state to the object. Now let's quit play mode and maybe um, go on to grip two. Let me re-enable that. So which whichever works, whichever works is almost exactly like the checklist. The only difference is that it um, if one of the conditions are met it's automatically gonna go here impact of a met condition so for example so like if if one of the conditions are met this is still enabled so this this object will be enabled too whereas if you enable the other one since this is still enabled this objects also enabled if you disable both it's no longer gonna exist because none of those conditions are being met. So it goes to consequences of unmet conditions area where it will disable that particular object. Now let's minimize that. And oh, if you if you guys want, you can always change the name of your activation station scripts. So like this can be named like whatever, for example. You can name it to whatever name you want and it helps it helps a lot in the long term because you can classify your activation station scripts. Now for group three, it's kinda different. The activation style is follow the leader. You have multiple followers, think of it like that, and you have one leader. The leader is enabled right now. So this causes all the followers to follow in that leader's footsteps and be enabled as well. If the leader is disabled, the followers will follow suit and disable themselves. See? If it's disabled, everything is disabled. So it's a good way to group objects together based on one particular object's um, an, uh, activation state. Now one thing to keep in mind is that um, activation station scripts are best used from afar. What I mean by that is that, like, 
it's best used if it's on a parent um, object. Because if it's on the child object, like, you don't want to, like, put an activation station script on the object itself. Because if you do that, it's going to cause some, like, unusual issues. For example, it's going to enable, like, another object, but then if it's a, if it's disabled, it can't enable itself again. So if you use an object, like a parent object, to control all of the objects, um, sep like, individually, then it lets them, like, enable or disable on a very, um, seamless basis. You don't have to worry about, like, oh no, the activation station script doesn't work because the object's disabled, if that makes sense. So yeah, so basically, if you're going to use activation station scripts, I recommend putting them on a parent object or an empty game object because that makes things much easier in the long run. Group 4 is Always Rebel, and Always Rebel is basically the same thing as uh, Follow the Leader, but the difference is that the rebels are actually like gonna be in an activation state that's opposite the tyrant. So the tyrant game object is going to be enabled. So if that's the case, the rebel game objects are going to be disabled and vice versa. Take a look. See? Now, since this game object's disabled, the other objects are enabled now. And then if it's enabled, the other, the other, the rebel game objects run away and then they're disabled. So those are all the different groups and what they do. Now let's cover the mouse activation. Let's um, let's un, let's minimize that, and then over here in controller input, this is where all the mouse activation, um, this is where all the mouse-based activation station scripts are at. So over here are the different conditions. This is if the left mouse button is pressed or released, and the right button mouse button is pressed or released. So let's maximize them. And see what's inside. Now, another cool thing about um, activation station is like it lets you visualize like whether a left mouse button is being held or not. So with the case of this, it's gonna check to see if the left mouse button is pressed. For example, left mouse button. If it's being pressed and hold, and if it's being pressed and held, then it's gonna um, perform these following actions. Okay. Now the cool thing about activation station again is like. Look, you can see that the conditions are being met and they're all in green. And then you can see that the actions are actually highlighted, the slots are being highlighted, because that means that the conditions are being met. Yeah. Oops. So, if we look again, we can see um, the mouse status. What that basically means is it tells you what button you're pressing. That's something that um, Activation Station is able to do now. It tells you exactly whether you're pressing the left mouse button or the right mouse button. And, yep, pretty much. Okay. Let me, oops. Um, so over here it says it's green, not on this. What this basically is, is the location of the mouse button. Now, the controller inputs an empty game object, so, um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna have a location. So what's gonna happen is, like, I'm gonna change the condition to on anywhere. So if you press the left mouse button anywhere, see? It's gonna do that. It's going to disable, and then when you release, which is in the next one, when you release, it's going to re-enable those. So, this is for when it's pressed, it's disabled. When it's released, it's re-enabled. Okay. So, see? It also tells you the right mouse button, middle mouse button. Now, one thing to take note of is that for this particular area, it'll tell you if the if the button is being pressed or not. 
if it says held, that means your like your finger is right on top of the mouse button. It's clicking it right now, and then you're pressing it. Now, because press and release are on on a on a, like a one frame basis, press is like activated like the the very frame you press the mouse button, and then it it doesn't and then it turns to hold. And then when you release the hold, when you release the mouse button, it turns to it actually turns into the release status. But then because it's only one frame, you don't really see it. So yeah. So basically, this these things right here. It's only gonna tell you. It's only gonna tell you if a button's pressed if it's the right button that's being pressed. If it's the right mouse button, it's not gonna tell you anything. See? And then on here it's basically going to tell you like if you're whether you're in an object or not. If if you're on like the object that the script is on, it's going to you know, if you put it like on, on this condition, it's only going to turn green if it's actually like on the object that you're on, but since it's an empty game object, it's not going to work. Okay, I hope that's a little clear. But yeah, I mean, the same thing's happening with the right mouse button things. See? Yep. Same things same things happening with them. So, if the right mouse button's being held, it's going to um it's going to disable the the objects on the right side. See? And then if you release it, it's going to re-enable them. So that's basically what these um, scripts mean. And so, yeah, like Activation Station is a powerful script. You can drag, you can either like select the game objects you want, like individually, like you can just drag it in, like this. You can choose them from here. You can drag them in. And if you want to like if you want to remove a game object you could like go on to select it you could scroll up and go here or you could just click this clear all button okay so it's fairly straightforward and the same thing will apply to like other stuff same thing will apply to impact of met conditions consequences of unmet conditions and the very conditions themselves it's very easy. You just drag it in, you just, or you just select it, or you, you click none, or you can also be like, you can also clear them all. Now let's undo the damage I've done. <laughs> okay, so keyboard activation. Let's let's try this out. Now, so if you can see that there's like actually like a list of keys it says here so if you click here it takes you to like an entirely new web page and this is the web page it takes you to conventional game input if you scroll all the way down it, it gives you like the convention of the keys so like if you wanna like if you wanna use like the A key you type it like that. There, there's no capitals. Um, it doesn't cover any joystick buttons or or mouse keys, so keep that in mind. It covers all the other keys. So let's go back here. A cool, another cool thing about my script is I've actually coded in every single keyboard possibility. So if you press on the keyboard button actually tells you what you're pressing and the very thing it tells you um, you can use that to type in so let's for example left mouse button is pressed let's change that to left key is pressed type type what you type exactly what you saw earlier there's no capitals and um yeah let's try it out Yeah, it works. It works as intended. So the same thing applies. 
um, this this particular area will act only show something if like it's the correct button being pressed. It's the correct key. Now let's change everything to the left key. Right mouse button turns into the right key. And I'm not sure if you can hear my key presses, but you can see that it's actually doing the job. Hold on. Oh, it didn't save because I was actually inputting the name of the key while I was in play mode, so it didn't save. So, alright. Yep. Yeah, works as intended now. Was, um, now only with keyboard keys. So that's how you can um, activate or deactivate um, objects using the keyboard activation feature. You can just type in a key using the, the using the convention you saw. Or even if you go on keyboard status, it tells you what naming convention you should follow, what you should type in here. So if you want to put that in, you can. And it covers like a wide array of keys. So for example, like it tells you like if you're pressing the LP the L key, P key, eight key, even slashes. I I um I embedded them all into the script. So that's pretty cool. Now, okay, the final thing. You see here like activation station. All you have to do is you like you drag in a script. Like you you make an empty game object, you just drag it in. It's that simple. You go to the scripts area, you just drag it in. You could also use add component scripts and then activation station, same thing. And then you could just literally like you can just drag things in. It's super super simple to use. Now here's the thing. What if you want to use another condition that's not the left mouse button or the keyboard keys? There's a way to do that as well. There is something here called activation condition. And what that basically means is like... Um, hold on. If you go to an empty game object, you put in an activation station script. You put in an activation condition script. Let's take a look at what's inside the script. So, with activation condition, there's something called a scenario, and there's something called something happens. It's basically placeholder terms. So, for example, like if scenario equals scenario one, if scenario is equal to scenario two. No, you know that's um, that's another way of saying like. That's another way of classifying them. Like for example, like you could have um, an activation condition. It it saves you the um, the time to have to like make multiple scripts for the same thing. So you could just use one activation condition script, and it will basically cover a wide array of scenarios. So for example, scenario one. You know, there's scenario two, there's scenario three, scenario X, and these basically like. You know, it, it helps to classify different scripts. I know. So, um, yeah. So, the script is going to check if scenario 1 is enabled. And then, over here, you can probably type in your own condition, too. So, like, for example, if... Let's say, for example, this is... You can classify this condition as, like... Condition 1. You can add in your own variables. You can type, probably type in like a public float whatever. And then you can type in like your very own variables, whatever is equal to 0. And then let's enclose these in brackets. If whatever is equal to 0, then like do everything here. Yeah. So 
So yeah, that's basically what something happens um, is referring to. Something happens is a bool script, but like you can change it to pretty much anything. You could even change it to like a float as well. You could change it to a string. You could do whatever you want with it. You can you can change a script to however you want. Basically, something happens. It's like um, it's just a placeholder way of saying if a script if a variable is equal to something, and this game object is enabled, you need to make sure you always have this area. This game object that enabled is equal to false. You need to make sure you have that area because what that basically means is that like if if the activation station component inside this game object is not enabled, what this script will do is it will enable it. So that's what that's basically what that means. Like if this if this variable is true, or if this variable is a particular value, and this um, the activation station component inside this game object is not enabled, this will enable it. So that's basically what it means. So it lets you um, enable the activation station um, component inside the game object. It lets you enable it if a particular condition is being met. So that's useful for like a wide array of um, different things. Like if you have a variable that you want to like apply to activation station, it's really, really, really useful for that. All right, so let's go over here, and then um, I think this is good. Let's save it, and then all right, you can see right now it's in, it's um, disabled. Oops. Let me drag. Let me drag a object in. Or yeah, let me clear this and then just put in a random um, action. Okay, so this is disabled, right? The activation condition like is enabled and it's, it has a variable already set. See, it enables itself because the activation station con the activation condition is already like set to a particular value and the value is being met. Now if it's not if it's not enabled for example, it's not going to do anything, see? So the activation condition will only um, enable this particular script if if the value or boolean um value is being met. Like so yeah, if a variable is equal to a particular value, that's only that's what's going to um, activate this particular activation station script. And keep in mind that like activation condition will only um will only it's only going to enable one activation station script. This activation condition script it's going to it's only going to enable one activation station script. So like you can't have like multiple activation station scripts for example because it's not this this particular script it's not going to know which um which activation station you're referring to so it's probably going to like I've tested it and it's going to like run a random activation station script or the first one in the whole batch so keep in mind that it's only going to be able to um enable one activation station script all right okay I think that's it. That's um this entire scene is available to you. You have the test scene available with a package. You have the scripts available and you also have like the materials. So these are the same materials that I've actually used for like the art of the a activation station script. So like um the logo itself and the product image. These are the textures I've used for those. So like these are available to you for free. And I'm going to add in like the setup guide and the documentation like folder later. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial and I highly recommend you um, get this script from the asset store. It's only $5 and I think it will be really useful for your game setup. Alright, thanks for watching guys and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.